Erica here with Prep Scholar GMAT. Most sentence correction questions contain a variety of errors. However, some errors are more critical than others. In fact, some things we think of as errors often aren't errors at all. Today, we'll apply the math concept of order of operations to grammar so you can correctly prioritize sentence correction rules. As always, if you like this video, please hit the button to subscribe and feel free to head over to our blog for even more great GMAT content. Links are in the description. So we can prioritize sentence correction rules by breaking them down into three categories. Meaning, hard grammar, and rhetoric. Of these, meaning is the most important, followed by hard grammar, and then finally, rhetoric. Let's break down what these categories mean and which rules fall under each. Our most important category, meaning, is pretty straightforward. It encapsulates any changes to the intended meaning of the sentence. One such way we can impact the meaning of the sentence is through errors in logic. If the meaning of the original sentence is logical, we can eliminate wrong answers that change this logic, even if they are grammatically correct. On the other hand, if the original sentence has a meaning that is illogical, we must choose an answer choice that corrects the meaning of the sentence. Another way meaning is affected is through modifier errors. An incorrectly placed modifier can mean that half of your sentence is describing the wrong word. That's a pretty significant shift in meaning. Hard grammar, the next most important category, involves the straight ahead, hard and fast, right or wrong grammar rules. For example, agreement. If you have a singular noun and a plural verb, it's wrong, no two ways about it. Other rules in this group include sentence structure, so no fragments, parallelism, and tense. Again, pretty simple. If it's right, it's right. If it's wrong, it's wrong. Now, before we move on to our final and least important category, rhetoric, there's a middle ground between hard grammar and rhetoric that's important to address, and that's idiom and diction. Now, we just did a Prep Scholar video on GMAT idioms. Why am I putting it so far down the list? Here's why. There are a ton of idiom and diction rules. Now, some we can trust as readily as we do our hard grammar rules, and that includes the ones in our recent idioms video. However, other rules are used less consistently on the GMAT or have multiple acceptable variations. What you may have learned was a rule in a test prep book may not always be true on the GMAT. What may have been preferable on one problem may not be on another. So while some idiom and diction rules can be incredibly useful on test day, others are not. And that leads us to our final category, rhetoric. Rhetoric is defined as the art of speaking or writing effectively. It encompasses the rules that are nice to follow, but not necessarily deal breakers. One classic example is concision. It's nice to have the shortest possible sentence, but we'd rather have a long, grammatically correct sentence than a short, grammatically incorrect sentence. A couple others I see a lot of students using to eliminate answer choices way too early are ambiguous pronouns and passive voice. Ambiguous pronouns aren't great, but there are real GMAT problems in which the correct answers feature ambiguous pronouns. The monkfish problem we featured in our 700 plus sentence correction webinar is a really great example of this. Similarly, passive voice is much maligned. It's some, it usually isn't the fastest way to say something, but it is 100% grammatically correct. Finally, awkwardness is something that gets thrown around a lot on forums. Eliminating something because it sounds wrong should be your absolute last resort. Our ears often betray us, and GMAT test writers intentionally write complex correct answers for this reason. Take another look at that monkfish problem if you want an example of this. Don't trust your ear unless there is absolutely nothing left to do. Okay, so how do we apply this hierarchy to sentence correction problems? We can think of it as an order of operations for elimination. So when solving a long math equation, we start with parentheses, then exponents, followed by multiplication and division, and finally addition and subtraction. Similarly, when evaluating the grammar of a sentence, we should prioritize eliminating answers by focusing on issues of meaning first, then moving on to grammatical errors, and only then finally addressing rhetorical concerns. So if, for example, you see right away that answer choice E is less concise, hold off on eliminating it. If answer choices A through D have more important problems, E will be the correct answer, despite its length. However, if there is another answer choice that doesn't have meaning or grammar issues, you may be able to use the rhetorical issues in E to eliminate. 
If you have any questions on what we talked about today or suggestions for future videos, please leave a comment below. Thanks for watching and happy GMAT studies.